uh, this device is a standard three Tesla magnetic resonance imaging device, the kind you would see in, in, a, in a hospitals, university hospitals, for example. Uh, functional magnetic resonance imaging, so fMRI, is based on the uh, bold effect, so blood oxygenation level dependent signal. And it's based on the assumption that when you have activation in the brain, in, in the neurons, uh, those places in the brain, they require more oxygen, which means that the, actually the blood flow will increase in those sites. And then the blood that contains more oxygen, it, it has different magnetic properties compared to the uh, blood that doesn't contain oxygen. And those differences in those magnetic properties, they can be detected with this MR device. Well, one way of quantifying how similar brain responses are across individuals <clears throat> is make them to go through a similar sensory stimulation or exactly the same, any kind of situation, and then quantify their brain activation and compute how synchronous the brain activity is across individuals. And that's one very powerful technique for studying how similar these brain are representations of various sensory situations are. And typically the lower order sensory regions in the brain respond very reliably to a given sensory stimulation across participants. But when you go up in the stream to more higher order cognitive and emotional processes, there tends to be a larger variability due to the fact that the people have a possibility to interpret the situation in a different way. To a large extent, what I've been working on is really to investigate uh, sensory processing of the brain and, and um, um, brain functions such as uh, cognitive functions such as uh, attention, um, emotions using fairly simplified stimuli uh, that are repeated over and over. And uh, what has really, I think, been lacking is the capability to, uh, to take the experimental subjects to conditions that resemble real life. And um, <clears throat> this way, um, um, be able to inspect cognitive functions that are at the core of psychology. And now with the, with the use of movies, we can finally do it. This is a scene from uh, the famous movie Godfather. Uh, but as, as soon as you uh, see the person waking up and there's blood, uh, you see these frontal cortical areas um, becoming uh, active in the subject population. And, and here you can see that, that um, uh, really something is wrong and, and you, you start seeing uh, also emotional responses in the, in the subject. So you can see there's there's a very uh, uh, robust activation of the, of the peripheral. So there's also the possibility of not showing full movies, but to show uh, movie clips, several movie clips in succession, and a sort of an intermediate stage between the uh, simple pictures and sounds the short clips and, and then on to the uh, full-length movies. Uh, of course, selecting clips and, and playing them allows us to uh, manipulate uh, the stimulus uh, content uh, a, a little bit uh, towards uh, answer uh, certain specific questions like showing uh, social interaction classes and, and uh, versus uh, non-social uh, scenes and probe the, the social brain uh, that way. Uh, I, I say that in addition to movies, uh, in, in the near future, uh, various uh, computer games uh, will offer the same types of possibilities. And uh, also they will offer uh, the possibility of, of looking at the brain of an individual when he or she is an active agent uh, going about in his or her environment. And uh, that'll then um, um, bring forth another set of cognitive functions that 
that uh, have been difficult to investigate uh, using these uh, simplified uh, stimulus paradigms.